or conversation that stands out as changing the course of your life or had the most significance? And I, I know you shared about the gentleman, um, you know, who tried to rob you. Is there any other? Well, my, my, my boss, Mr. Langle, he was my boss for five years and delivered newspapers. And he noticed that I had a bank book in my pocket one day. And he asked if he could see it. And I showed it to him. And he says, what, what, are, you, what, are, you, what are you gonna do with this money? And I said, well, I'm saving to go to college. He says, oh. He said, does your brother have a bank account too? I said, yeah, he got twice as much as I have. So he says, oh, okay. He said, I wanna send somebody to your house to talk to you. I said, oh, okay. So he sent the man to the house, Mr. Coleman, who was a financial planner. And he sat down with me, 13 year old boy, a 15 year old boy, my brother, and my mother. And he explained to us how money worked. The rule of 72, the difference between whole life insurance and term insurance. Told my, told my mother, you know, your children don't need to be insured. They're not, they're not, nobody's dependent on them. And if something happened to them, heaven forbid, you, you can still bury them, nobody's dependent. But if something happens to you or your husband, you need to have adequate insurance to be able to pay for housing and, and school and all other kind of things. So with term insurance, you can get, you can get a million dollars worth of insurance cheap. Mm -hmm. Instead of buying insurance for the kids, invest for the kids in mutual funds. So my mother cashed in our whole life insurance policy, got us mutual funds, got more insurance on, on, on my dad, and I still have the money in, from that mutual fund that she started. Just kept building up, building up, building up. I, I got a loan off of it one time, got my, made my credit score go way up when I paid it back real quick. So between these two men, Mr. Langham and Mr. Coleman, these two men, they really helped my brother and I understand how money works. They advised us to save $10,000 on our first full-time job. Make that your goal. Don't worry about a car. Don't worry about anything else. And like, I wanted to go away to college. I wanted to go to like uh, Florida a and or something like that. And he says, son, that's good. Being away in a dorm is fantastic, but you can't afford that. Stay home with your mama, go to a state-supported school, and... Get, your, get that piece of paper if it takes you 10 years to get it. Get that piece of paper because it opens doors for you. So I, I stayed home with my mama. At one time I wanted to move, my mother convinced me that that wasn't a wise idea because she could charge me rent, and she did. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's funny. <laughs> well, she said she liked washing clothes. She, she took my man washing my clothes and cooking for me, and, and she, I was good company. She liked having me around, and she was as happy as she could be. And when I got back from Peace Corps, the money I paid her for rent, she put in a bank account and I use it on a down payment on the house that I'm living in right now. That is phenomenal. How fortunate that this boss took that step and made that difference going and, and having this gentleman come talk to you, that that has altered the course of your life in such a positive and powerful way. Mm -hmm. that, you know, it, it's just a nice reminder of how you never know what conversation is going to change someone's life. And he was a black man who had made a million dollars in real estate. And he came back into the black community to help black boys. And he bought the newspaper franchise. And I'm guessing, was Mr. Coleman, the financial advisor, was he also African-American? Yes, he was. He wanted to be a uh, stockbroker, but... Being black at the, at the time, it, it wasn't possible for him to be a stockbroker. So he went into financial planning. And he's working for an organization called Wardell and Reed. He recruited retired teachers, retired black teachers to work for him. And he set up his business. He helped him get insurance license, securities license, and then flipped their annuities into mutual funds instead of annuitizing. And they were able to get bigger returns and they became really good financial planners for him. And when I first went to his office, 
I thought Wardell and Reed was a black organization because there were all these black folks who were working in there. <laughs> it, it wasn't until I went to North Carolina, I realized, oh. <laughs> he saw it as a way to help black men, black women get into business on their own and learn about how money really works. But bad term and invested difference. That's, that was their attitude. And don't annuitize your annuity. Take the lump sum, invest it in a good mutual fund, and let it continue to earn for you. Because if you, if you annuitize it, you no longer control the principal. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's great advice. I mean, you know, we're, I'm just sitting here having conversations with brothers, but I'm telling you, um, these conversations are dropping knowledge. 